it was a little too close for comfort, but it was still a cover, and that's all that counts. What I'm speaking of, of course, is last night I had a rare Raise the Bar 20-dime release. Only the 21st such play in college basketball over the past 15 years, but the second since Saturday and the second straight winner since Saturday by the slimmest of margins. Last night, Nebraska, a two-point favorite at home against Maryland, holding on for the four-point win. On the heels of Saturday's winner, Loyola of Chicago, the three, the three-and-a-half-point favorite, winning by four at Indiana State. And both of those plays, you got them as the half-price play of the day. As I continue to show you that you don't have to spend big money in order to make big money. Now listen, I would have loved for it to be much easier. I would have loved for it to be like my Sunday top-rated 15-dime play with Cincinnati 8.5 point choice at SMU, winning in a wire-to-wire -wire road route by 25 points. But that ain't the way it was. And it doesn't matter. Because a win is a win is a cover is a cover, and that's all that counts when you're cashing in that winning ticket. And frankly, who cares? Because for as many tear-jerking backdoor losses we have all experienced, we are owed those type of wins last night. We are allowed and expected to win those type of games like last night's. It's okay. You know it as well as I do. For me personally, that means I've now uh, won, what, uh, 19 of the uh, last, uh, just double-checking, 19 of the last 26 days. And that puts me in position now tonight to go for top-rated 15-time winner, number 11 out of 14, as I return to one of my most profitable conferences this season, that being the Missouri Valley Conference, Valparaiso, playing at Loyola of Chicago, matches that 15-time winner I had with Cincinnati, hammering SMU on uh, Sunday matches my 15-dime winner with Rhode Island hammering Davidson by double digits in a round on Friday night. Matches last Wednesday's winner with Texas Tech in revenge in a double-digit home route of Iowa State. Now, let's talk about some of the hot handicappers here at the site. Anthony Red yesterday lost his top-rated 100-dime college basketball winner number 16 out of 22. Miami of Florida did not cover last night against Virginia. But he had won his previous 400 dime releases in college hoops, scoring with um, Duke over Georgia Tech on Saturday, Washington uh, covering at Oregon State on uh, Saturday, Duke was on Sunday, uh, scoring last Wednesday, I think it was, with Texas A&M outright over Auburn. And the fact is, despite losing last night, he has still won 17 of the past 25 days and 7 of the last 9. And in the past 24 days, he's made $10 betters, $6,365. Well, today, Anthony has the biggest play of the entire season. His first 150 dime play in college basketball since last March. And it's his 150 dime line error lock of the year. It's one of the games that goes at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Remember that little 159 play he had on the Eagles in the Super Bowl? That's how big this play is. You get it. as the half-price play of the day today. Just like my play yesterday, it's the biggest play on the board, the featured play of all the handicappers. Again, as I say, I don't believe and never have that you have to spend big money to make big money. You get it as the half-price play of the day simply by using coupon code 100 and 50 dimer 150 D I M E R as he goes for college basketball winner number 19 out of 29 overall uh, also among today's plays uh, Matt River Matt River <laughs> Oh I'm going to hear from Matt one oh my god you know Matt runs a um a, uh, a what do you call it a valet parking service down in uh, South Florida, actually has a number of uh, valet parking service uh, lots under his uh, guidance down in South Florida in the Miami uh, Beach area. I will certainly hear from him after messing up his name today. Uh, I never hear from him on the good things. I will hear from him from this one. So Matt Rivers uh, today has his uh, ninth college basketball. Blank check wave the rating uh, game going tonight. It's also in the Missouri Valley Conference. It's on Bradley and Illinois State. Uh, blank check basketball winner number seven out of nine going tonight in NBA and college basketball combined. Hit with Villanova over Butler last Saturday. Hit with uh, Indiana over Minnesota uh, last Friday, two Saturdays ago. Virginia over Syracuse. You get it for over half price off by using coupon code 
blank, B-L-A-N-K. Let's get to your complimentary plays. Took a split with them yesterday, hitting with Texas Tech, losing with Toledo. And uh, remind me, guys, out there, the next time I ever use a complimentary play with any team from the Mid-American Conference, just, you know, just ignore anything I have to say about that team. I just, I cannot win in the Mid-American Conference. I don't care if it's football or not. I can't win. Okay. In the Missouri Valley Conference tonight, I really like this game. I came so close to using this game. I used this team in their last game as a complimentary play. I'm going to use them again here tonight. Southern Illinois, minus the three and a half points at home tonight uh, against Missouri State. They're coming off a 74-57 win Sunday at home against Bradley. Uh, they shot 64% in the second half of that game. 56.5% overall in that game. They've won six of their last seven games overall. They won the first meeting in this series, uh, January 27th, in Springfield, Missouri, as a six-point underdog, 79-77. Jumped out to an 11-point halftime lead in that contest. Had to hang on for dear life. Um, outshot the Bears in that game, 63.7% to 47.2%. Um, Armand Fletcher scored the last of his game high 18 points on a jumper with 6.7 ticks left on the clock and then watched Southwest Mo miss a three-pointer at the buzzer that could have won it for them. Now, the Bears are coming off a 81-62, no, it was 72-55 win uh, at home against Evansville. Um, but Evansville, the Purple Aces, had lost six of their previous seven games on the road. Uh, the game prior to that, they won at Indiana State, 81-62. Sycamores had lost three of their previous four games. Uh, before those two wins, however, Southwest Missouri State, an offensively challenged team, had lost five straight games. They had also lost five straight road games before winning at Indiana State. The key to South Illinois, uh, Southern Illinois here of late has been the play of their center, um, and I hope I once again pronounce his name right, 6'10 junior center, uh, Kavion Pippen, who is Scotty Pippen's nephew. He's averaged 21 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 or he's coming off 21 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 blocks in 27 minutes versus Bradley on Sunday. In his last five games, he's averaged 17 points um, and um, about, oh, I think it's about 6, 7 rebounds a game. Um, he's really been playing well. Southern Illinois has moved into sole possession of second place in the Missouri Valley Conference. Um, they're 11 and 2 at home. Uh, this is, uh, and by the way, this is the information that you can't get anywhere else. And their latest effort to invigorate student attendance at these games tonight is Tinder Night. Tinder Night in uh, normal Illinois where the promotion is that uh, it's they're going to have a meet your match lounge at the uh, arena potential couples can meet in a quiet uh, setting where they will have cocktail tables fake roses and breath mints i don't make this up I can only relay the facts to you. They will have name tags, not only that and that quiet conversation, but if the date goes poorly, you can text SAVE ME and the Saluki mascot, Gray Dog, will then rescue you. Again, I cannot make this stuff up. There you go. Uh, a couple uh, interesting other little things here. Uh, for Southwest Missouri State, they're minus a couple of players. One of them, one of their key uh, forwards off the bench, Reggie Scurry, their third leading scorer, who averages about nine points and four rebounds a game. Uh, chirotherapy, which is that uh, method where you kind of emerge your body in a cold, freezing uh, uh, brew, shall we say. A um, couple of their players, everybody, the team uh, had this whole body treatment thing back in January. A couple of their players uh, suffered severe burns on their feet, including Scurry. Uh, so they are minus two players, including Scurry still. So they're a little bit of a shorthanded situation. Um, you know, I just, I like the Salukis here. They've won five straight at home in conference play. They're a much better shooting team at home. They shoot almost 51% at home versus 44% on the road. I think it's a cheap chalk price. Say that three times quickly, I dare you. So Southern Illinois minus the points is the way I'm going to go in this game. Um, your other games tonight. Um, 
boy, I was going to go with the 76ers at home, but with Joel Embiid questionable because of a nagging ankle injury, <laughs> has me uh, worried there. I can't really get behind the 76ers there. Uh, it came down between Indiana, minus the nine points at home against Illinois in Revenge, and Xavier, minus the five and a half points at home against Seton Hall. There are two pretty stiff prices to lay here. Um, and both opponents, the visitors, are both struggling teams here of late. So ultimately, it came down to me taking the better of the two teams. And in this particular case, I have to go with Xavier, playing at home. Uh, this is a Musketeers team that's coming off a 72-70 win at Creighton and a 98-93 over overtime win at Butler. They've won eight straight games. The first meeting between these two, January 20th, uh, Seton, Hall, uh, Seton Hall had a 10-point lead early in the second half. Uh, Xavier rallied and handed them their first home loss of the season at the Prudential Center, 73-64. Um, they closed that game on a 21-7 run. And Seton Hall in that game, 4 for 20 on three-pointers, only shot 42.6%, and they were playing at home. And the thing that really impressed me in looking at the box score in that game, even though Angel Delgado, the big center for Seton Hall, had 18 rebounds, and, um, you know, Xavier did a great job on the board. They were only out-rebounded 38-36. And Seton Hall, because of Xavier's pressure defense, committed 18 turnovers in that game. The Musketeers are 6-0 at home in conference play. Do they have a big look-ahead game with Villanova on Saturday? Yes, but this is every bit as big of a game for the Musketeers. And the Pirates here are in a big-time slump. They're coming off an 83-80 loss as a five-point road chalk at Georgetown on Saturday. They've lost three in a row in five of their last seven games. Um, you know, they're just not that good on the road, uh, you know, so three and five in true road games, in fact. I just like Xavier in this game, and I'm willing to lay the bigger price. I would have loved them at three and a half. I would have liked them at four. Five and a half, not nearly as enthralled with this game. So in terms of the two free picks, I like Southern Illinois more. Xavier would be my second choice. Uh, and that's my story, sticking with it. And I'll talk to you again tomorrow when we do this again. Happy Valentine's Day to you all out there. If you don't happen to be in, uh, where's Southern Illinois? Carbondale, Illinois. If you don't happen to be there for Tinder night, hey, you're on your own. What can I tell you? Good luck, everybody.